All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. Do you guys ever wonder why people, when they're making a serious video, like they sigh at the beginning? That's like genuine. It's such an uncomfortable position to be in, to like talk to a camera about like your inner most deepest thoughts. Uh, so let me preface this video by saying I don't exactly know why I'm filming this video. And I've been trying to think about like why are you doing this? If you aren't sure about why you're doing it, should you do it? And I think it just comes down to like I've always been such an open book um, for the sake of wanting to help other people. You know, I started my like adult life as an 18 year old married to a man in the military. It was the loneliest time in my life and I started YouTube as a way to I guess help other people not feel as alone as I felt and everything that I have shared since has been because I want somebody else to know that they are not alone in their feelings but as I've gotten older I have become a much more private person I went from sharing my every single thought online to now barely sharing anything at all. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or somewhere in between the middle, but I just feel like there are people that have been following my channel for years and years and years. Some of you have been with me since I started YouTube over 10 years ago and I had my first child and then my second and I think I'm just such a different person now than I was then obviously I was 18 years old I'm going into my 30th year now and I mean bottom line it comes down to this the past about two years of my life I have filmed videos where I have said Obviously, I have gone through some really difficult things and it's been shitty. It's been a shitty year, a shitty two years, and I think I'm just ready to kind of like share a little bit of that. You know, I'm not going to get too deeply personal with it, so some things are going to be a little vague, but I think it's important to actually kind of get some kind of like background to it instead of just carrying on as if these things didn't happen and the past two years of my life haven't been the biggest years of growth. Um, also just because in the past two years I think what I'm trying to learn and that's part of making this video is that I have always been a glass half full type of person. You know, I've gone through things in my life that, you know, most people go through or other people go through. You know, I come from a divorced family. You know, in therapy they tend to say that comes with a lot of baggage, but it never did for me. I've just always been the type of person that I chose to see the beauty and the chaos. It's just how my mind works. I don't look back at my childhood and think, oh, my parents were divorced, so my life lacked this. Instead, I think I had a really great childhood. And also, anytime I was going through anything, I always would tell myself, there are people that have it so much worse. Like, these are such first world problems. So I just always convinced myself that, and I still do, I still convince myself that things that I went through, they're not that bad. Like, once I kind of distance myself away from them, I kind of feel like, oh, it wasn't as bad, as traumatic, as deep as you made it seem while you were in it. But with this, the fact of the matter is that it was. The past two years hurt very bad. God, I said, like, I said I wasn't going to cry because I'm so, like, far removed from these things, but here we are. I think it's also worth noting that I don't feel good right now. Like, <laughs> I feel like I definitely don't look my best. I was sick. My lips cracked open. I have this, this blister that came from it on my lip. But I'm like, this is the energy I'm trying to bring into 2020. It's just, I guess fake it till you make it. Like, <laughs> to get out of that whole social media, like, perfect image mindset and just live authentically. So I think we need to start with going back to where it all started. So May 3rd, 2018, which seems so far away now, but still, like, it feels like yesterday, I had a partial hysterectomy. I shared that journey that journey on my channel. You guys saw on a week-to-week -week basis what I went through with that. 
and so that's already something that is such a huge change in your life and maybe it doesn't sound like it but you're you know you're taking out a part of your body like a part of your body that you're born with that you know carried my children and that was on May 3rd I was deep in the recovery of that which is a very it's a very I don't want to say intense intense is not the right word but it's a very intentional recovery your whole stomach feels like any little movement and everything can fall and detach and it kind of is like that all your organs are kind of shifting back into place and you have to be careful not to tear stitches and it's a whole thing <sighs> this is a part of the story I it's like so deeply personal that I don't even want to share it but I just will give you the basis of it May 13th two weeks after my surgery I received like really devastating news like news that shocked my whole world it changed everything that day was the day that everything changed for me it changed the way that I looked at the world it changed the way that I looked at other people it changed the just the way that I find healing it opened up it wasn't all bad because it is a situation that really forced me to do a lot of reflection, do a lot of therapy, really dive into my hobbies and my passions. That is when I started working with animals at the animal shelter. That is when I started writing music. That is when I started learning piano. I got tattoos for healing. So it was a very, it was just a very intense, traumatic situation to be in. and. It's not my place to share the details of that because there are so many different people involved. It's not really my story. So, but while it's not my story, it affected my life and it hurt me really, really deeply. And with that, you know, and be mindful, this was two weeks after my surgery. So, <laughs> I literally sat in therapy and I was like I am deep in recovery from a surgery and now I'm dealing with this emotionally and so that happened and then with that I found out news about somebody in my life that again it was something that changed like it changed everything because I had to start looking at somebody I don't even know how to explain this because again I don't want to give details and it's not my story to tell but I had to start looking at somebody where in the past I didn't really have future concerns and then I had to start looking at this person as okay what if something happens in the future what if this happens then what is a decision that I have to make and you know it's just it was just a it was a hard situation because not only did it affect the then it also affected the way that I had to think about the future and about where I stand with people and so I know that's all very very vague but I say all that to say it I say all that to say that was the situation in my life that changed everything I think we all have a situation it's the first thing that happens in our life that we completely change our mindset we change our perspective, we change the way that we do things and look at things, and that was the situation for me. So, at that time, I was dealing with basically emotional healing. I was dealing with physical healing of my body, and I was dealing with hormones, which I've talked about in videos before. So, it became very blurry some days where I was doing the work I felt good about what I was doing but is this you know are these emotions coming from a place of healing or are these emotions coming from hormones because all of this happened at the same time it was very difficult to understand why I was feeling what I was feeling when you know hormones are something you have I mean very little control over during you know after a hysterectomy and then you also deal with emotional trauma and so the next, what would that be, like the next almost year 
was just a lot of up and down. It was so much up and down. It was a lot of feeling really good for a few weeks and then feeling really depressed for a few weeks. And just always having to reevaluate what if my healing is working, if I'm tackling things face on or if I'm avoiding things, how do I need to adjust to make sure that this doesn't come back around in my life? So it maybe that sounds dramatic, but that's what it was for almost about the next year. It was just a lot of up and down and healing emotionally. And so then going through that, I guess I, so I said, I kind of said it briefly, but during this period, my anxiety got really, really bad. Again, it's kind of that hormone versus emotional thing. I never knew where the anxiety came from because in the past, my anxiety, I was able to pinpoint it. I knew exactly why I was feeling the way that I was feeling. I could tackle it, I can control it. And at that period in my life, my anxiety would just be, I would wake up in the morning and I would feel a weight on my chest. Like I would feel my whole body feel anxious. And so it started with really, really, really bad anxiety. And then I started getting little bouts of depression, but it was so minor at that point, like one or two days max. My cat is messing around over there. Um, but that was what I was dealing with for about the next year. Then in March, Mar no, May, so it actually was a year later, right around the same time that all that stuff happened before, I dealt with a really heavy loss. And I told myself I wasn't gonna cry. Um, I dealt with a really heavy loss and I think loss happens in a lot of ways. Obviously, sometimes it's very sudden, sometimes it builds up, and that's what this situation was for me, I knew it was coming for about a week, and so I had to sit on that for a week. Oh, God. Okay, I'm pulling it together. I had to sit on that loss for a week, knowing that it was coming. And after that, oh my God. After that, I just found myself like, I would cry myself to sleep every night. My husband would just hold me as I would have panic attacks. My husband would hold me while I was having panic attacks and I would tell him I just can't stop crying. And it hurts so bad. And he was sad, but he was keeping it together for me and was just telling me, I know, I know it hurts, but you can't, like you're gonna cause yourself to be sick. And I just kept trying to like pull it together, but it was such a painful loss. One that I kept, I mean, it is what it is. It was a loss. So after that, I started experiencing more depression. Like I started experiencing, it went from like two to three days to four to five days. It would just be like these really big bouts of depression for me and but I just like I was like well you got to get through the day like there's nothing you could do about it you got to focus more of your you know your energy here and keep healing so just around the point when I started I feel like to pull it together I still would get really sad and I would think about it and it hurt but I felt like I was kind of like pulling it together and then my kids went back to school um, that week leading up to them going back to school was really hard. I already have a hard time with them going back to school, but after things like started to really go crazy in my life, sending them back to school became really difficult, really overwhelming. They became like my safety blanket. I felt good having them around. And on the first day of school, guys, I'm over here trying to keep complete thoughts and my cat's over here destroying a box. Um, on the first day of school, we woke up and we saw our oldest dog bleeding everywhere. I had to put the cats away in another room. So on the first day of school, we woke up and our, our oldest dog, we saw just like bleeding everywhere. And I don't want to really get into the details because, I mean, I shared all that on Instagram. And the reason I shared it on Instagram was because I just felt so alone. 
I was already hurting from a loss, what, like three, four, five months prior. And she would go to the vet for days at a time in critical care. And I would be home just like waiting for an update because they would call me every day with updates. And at the end of it, it was just a lot of up and down, like a lot of getting hope that she was getting better. She would look really good and then the next day she would crash and then she would go back to the hospital, get IVs, do all that stuff, get, you know, we'd switch her medication and it was such a, it was a month of that and, um, like, I remember talking to my mom saying, like, I can totally understand caregiver fatigue right now because I was just burnt out. I was burnt out from the actual physical aspect of it the entire day. The entire day I was, she was paralyzed, so I was cleaning up, like, messes all day long, pee and poop. I was having to wash blankets, sheets all day long. I had to wash her. I had to empty her bladder. Everything had to be, like, impeccably clean because the infection, and it was just a disaster. And it just got to a point where I was like, I either need her to get better or I'm just ready for her to like feel okay to go because it was a lot. It was a lot for me and for my husband and that was our first dog, but it was also my husband's, like that was my husband's dog. So I remember at one point it got really hard because we were in the middle of a hurricane. Like, we were in the middle of a hurricane and she started going downhill really fast and there would have been nothing that we could have done. Like, so I just remember my husband and I laying down with her and telling her like, it's okay, you can go, like, you don't have to stay here for us. But somehow, even though my husband was like, I don't think she's gonna make it to the night, Somehow she made it through the night and the hurricane was still, it was moving so slowly that it was far enough away that the vet decided to open for that day, for half the day. We took her back and they admitted her and said, look, it's best that she's here. When the hurricane hits, we could take care of her. So we did that. <sighs> We did that and then she was home for a few days and she just started really declining really fast to the point that they sent me home with fluids with bags of fluids and we had to insert the needle and give her fluids that way and that day I told my husband like I really I think it's time and by that point, he was so desperate that he's like, well, how much do the bags cost? Can we just keep doing this at home? And I said, this is not a way for her to live. And so the next day, the next day we put her down in. And it felt so impossible, like, I left the room, and then I ran back into the room because I felt like I was abandoning her, even though she was gone. Oh, God. And so at that point, it all just kind of felt like a joke, like, it felt like, how, like, I had just experienced loss a few months prior. And how I was going through it again. <sighs> and so, that really is what is the craziest thing about it. Like, I experienced one, t one type of loss where I knew it was coming, I was waiting on it. And then I experienced a different kind of loss where I had all this hope. And... And, like, I was just waiting for it to turn around, and it just didn't. Oh, God. I'm just so sorry, guys. I really, I really thought I was going to get through this without crying, because I could talk about it, like, to other people without crying, because it's just where I've had to.
So now, this one back here, this is my my bull mastiff. Now she's been dealing with depression ever since Luna died, and it's that's been a whole other thing. And you know, so just to kind of make light of the situation, like I went into 2020 like feeling hopeful. I'm like, look, this has to be the year that is going to be good. It has to turn around. And I went into it sick. <laughs> I was really sick. I had a fever. And then this happened and uh, our dog hurt herself. So it was just like, if this is what 2020 is going to be, like I quit already. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but so in a, in a, almost two year time I just I went through a major surgery I dealt with very devastating traumatic news I was dealing with another situation I experienced loss and I experienced another loss on top of just feeling anxiety and depression from all this stuff happening and from hormones and so it just really has been a very difficult past almost two years and at this point I just feel so sick of like saying that and I'm trying I keep trying to figure out what is like the lesson like how am I supposed to use this but that's just what it is and I don't I just felt like my heart felt like I needed to share it because like I said there just have been people that have watched me for a really really long time and this is where I'm at. This is why, not that I was ever consistent before, but this is why my channel is where it's at now because it's just, it feels very hard to fit in filming videos when most of your time is spent really just trying to heal <laughs> and filling your schedule with things that make you feel good, things that help that process. You know, I could either sit down and film a video, or I could spend time with my animals, I could play music on the piano, I could go to my piano lessons. Um, so it's kind of just, it's just a, a thing about like priorities right now, and uh, so when I thought about filming this video, I didn't think about how I was going to end this video, and I still don't know how I'm going to end it, but I just wanted you guys to get a little bit of an idea of the the things that I have dealt with and now see I was about to say and I know that maybe to some people it's you know a little thing and it's not a big deal but that's just discrediting my pain in these situations and that's not fair to me and that's one of the reasons I'm filming this video to stop doing that to myself <laughs> so anyway any, anyway anyways thank you guys for listening Thank you for anybody that watched all the way through. I hope that 2020 is a better year for you if you've experienced, you know, if 2019 was a shitty year or 2018 was a shitty year. Hopefully 2020 is a better year for all of us. Happy New Year, guys. I'm turning 30. <laughs> I'm turning 30. I started this channel when I was 18 years old and now I'm going to be 30. So that's insane. Alright, I need to go. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.